Hi everyone, this is Laura from Grain & Company. So today we're going to go through the uh, the beaded garland for your tear tray kit. So in your package you will have 25 beads, your string, and you will have a little watering can for your end of it. This time you won't have uh, a tassel, um, so we're going to do something a little bit different. So with this particular design, I have split the beads up into four different colors. So when you take 25 and divide it by four, that gives you six plus one. So uh, what I like to do is do my natural bead or my white bead, depending as my one that starts and stops. So that's the one that will have a little extra. So that one would be seven five and seven and then all the rest will have six beads that one has six and I just like to put them in little cups here because once I'm done painting them I can put them back in there so they won't be rolling around all over the place your string can stay in there and that is the one with seven so I'm gonna start if you've never done our beads before you'll have two skewers in your kit uh, as well and uh, I'm going to show you how we do it here if you see other ways and you want to do it that way you're more than welcome to do that but uh, we find this to be fairly simple and relaxing so what you're going to do I find it easier to fit just four beads on a skewer at a time so I'll put four on and I'll hold back three, take my second skewer with the tip, and I will shove it underneath. Oops, hold on. Okay, it's really not this difficult. I'm just having a moment here. All right, so just shove it in there so now your bead is not going anywhere. And these small little brushes, little flat brushes, are great for painting them. So what you're gonna do is put a little paint on, and I like to start at the bottom and then just kind of feather it out. Now you don't want to put on so much paint that when you take it off of here, it will be in a puddle. So it's just a very light, thin coat. If you can see it's almost dry. You don't see any big gobs of paint. And then you pull it off and then you set it down. I'm painting on parchment paper so that way when I let it sit there, it won't stick to my surface when I'm done. So I'm just gonna, whoops, and that happens. So just make sure you wedge it in really well and then just start at the bottom. And then if I paint coming down from the top, then it keeps it from flying all over the place. And then just kind of gently feather out that paint and then you can take it off. I always just do one coat. You can do as many coats as you'd like. Um, some colors might need two. Uh, but we've always just done one in our workshops here, so just gently start at the bottom and then feather around. So I am just going to continue on. I'm not going to talk anymore. We're just going to let you watch me paint beads. And uh, when I'm done and these are all dry, then I will come back and show you how to put it all together. All right.
Hi everyone, I'm gonna go through now how to assemble our beaded garland. Um, for those of you who have done our tear trees before, this might be fairly simple for you, but for some, this might be all new. So when I do the string for our garland, what I will do is I will take a piece of uh, scotch tape and I will put it on e each end. It will make it easier for threading your beads. So not a very big piece, maybe half an inch at the most. You don't want it to build up too thick on the ends. And just roll it as tight as you can. There's that one. Okay, so now both of my ends are done. Now we need to create a loop for the end of the garland. So what I do is I usually create a tail, kind of fold it at the end, have about three, four inches on one side. And I'm going to kind of take it like I was tying a knot, okay? But we're not gonna close it all the way. You just I'm going to start that again so you can, so just like you were going to tie a knot, but don't close it all the way. Okay, so there's that loop, and they still have a tail on the end where the sh with the tape and then the rest hanging here. So now you need to do the exact same thing you did before and tie like you were tying another knot into the other one and pull those to create a knot without closing that loop. So you're just gonna kind of pull them against each other. Once you get a bead on there, it's easy to really tighten up that knot, but right now you just have to do your best with it out, with it not sliding. <clears throat> okay, so right now this is what you should have. So you have a little bit of a tail, you have your loop that's been knotted here, and then the rest hanging down here. Okay, so now you're gonna figure out what pattern you want to do. Now, when you painted these, um, it's been a while since I did these, so now I gotta figure out which case. So the natural ones I left in the, the with the odd amount. So it is always your start and stop on the odd one, and then just create your pattern after that. So depending on how you want it to go, because you'll have an odd, even, even, even. So I'm going to start with my odd on the on the opposite end of where the loop is. You're gonna take your first bead and you're gonna to start to thread it. Now, as you approach this tail by your loop, you're gonna stick both of them through the bead and then pull tight. And that's when you can pull tight on that knot. What we're trying to do is we're trying to hide this tail. If we cut this, then this makes this a very weak end and then your whole garland could fall apart at some point. So we're just gonna keep hiding that into there. So I'm just gonna keep threading until I am done all my beads. Um, when you're doing these, you don't, if you push them really tight, at the end, we're gonna um, not tie the knot so close, so that way they'll be able to move a little bit because you need a little bit of a gap for them to be able to, to move. And I'll show you that once I get to the end. So I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna finish mine and then I'll come back when I have them all on there and I'll go through it some more. Okay, so I am done. If these are done really tight with no gap, there is not much movement. Like they're very stiff um, and you wanna be able to maneuver your beads so you can lay them down, you can curl them however you want. So either leave a little slack in between each bead or at the end of your beads, you will tie a knot just not as close to the beads, just maybe just like a quarter inch. Now this is a little th thinner string, so I'm just going to 
double knot it at the end so that I know I don't have to worry about them sliding off. Okay, so now I can like curl it up and they'll move and they won't be stiff and I can do whatever I want with them. Okay, so normally the next part we would do is we would attach a tassel and you're more than welcome to make yourself a ta tassel and add it on. Okay, so normally um, we would do a tassel. Sorry guys, I might be repeating myself. I just had to stop for customer. Um, so you can more than welcome to make a tassel and put that on the end and attach it. Um, and then you can also attach the little watering can with it at the same time. That would be totally fine. Um, but anyways, we're just gonna do the watering can. Now I left it mine in a natural state because I like it with the color of my beads. However, you can paint it any of the colors that you want. You can stain it. It's completely up to you. So I left that decision up to you. Now the top of the watering can, that's where I'm going to feed my bottom thread through. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a knot up at the top. I'm going to try and get this as close as to that knot as possible. So I don't have it dangling down too much. So there we go. And then you kind of want that knot up at the top of the handle on that. So I'm going to knot it again. I'm used to doing a tassel with this, so I'm just trying to figure out what's going to look the best here. Because normally I probably would tie a tassel with it and just have the um, watering can as a little cute accessory piece, but Guys, honestly, I wasn't going to tie 66 tassels for you guys. So <laughs> um, if any of you guys want instructions on the tassel, you can let me know and I can quickly do a video for that. Okay, so now that I've tied it, it's attached. It's not going anywhere. I don't want to cut the string as well because then that makes that knotted area very weak. So um, because we don't have the tassel on this one, we cut the string as a standard size. So it might be a little longer depending on how big you made your loop up there. So um, if it's got a little extra length, we'll eventually just cut some of it off. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back up through the beads and you are going to hide it in there. So I just pull and just thread it through. And you're just gonna go all the way until it's hid. I mean, you can cut it eventually, but you want to make sure where you cut it that it's not hanging out in between your beads. So um, it really doesn't take that long. So I usually just go and thread it all the way up as far as it'll go. If it does end up sticking out a little bit, I'll usually just cut a little bit of that tape end, but see there, now you won't even know and it's attached just like that. All right, so good luck with that guys. And if you have any questions, you know, just send me a message. All right, 